Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Have something a little different we're working on today. We're repowering a John Deere 757 Z Track mower. Um, this video actually will also apply to the John Deere 737 Z Tracks. Um, this motor had a failure where it bent push rods on one of the cylinder heads. It's running on one cylinder. So we're going to go ahead and swap it out. You can have the motor rebuilt. Um, a brand new motor from John Deere is uh, just under $3,200. Um, in my case, what I opted to do was buy basically a Kawasaki motor, which is the manufacturer of the John Deere motor. It's the same identical motor. Got this from Carroll Stream Motor Company. This was about $2,400. Um, I want to say that one with the air intake like this one is around $2,200, $2,300. I opted to go with the uh, heavier duty air intake. Um, the motor came already set up for it. Um, the swap is actually very simple. It is a direct swap. Uh, you just have to swap over the voltage regulator and the starter <clears throat> on these Kawasaki motors. Um, I guess the John Deere starter is about, about a $400 item. So I guess if, um, if you needed a starter, buying the motor from John Deere would be, you know, end up being pretty close in cost. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and get this started. We're going to take the back panel off. Um, I did mention before that this also applies to the John Deere 737. The John Deere 737 is the identical motor to this one. The only difference is the carburetor is adjusted to not open up all the way. Um, but you can run the 25 horsepower motor in the 737 with no problem at all. Um, these motors are known for failures, having a horizontal crankshaft. The crankshaft does not turn on a bearing. It actually runs on bushings that are in the case halves. And uh, eventually what ends up happening is, is the bushing wears, the crankshaft drops, you start to get oil leaks at the in the rear crank seal and in the front crank seal. The front crank seal where the fan is will eventually you'll get a lot of debris and uh, stuff getting into the cooling fins on the head and eventually you'll create an overheating problem and uh, if not addressed and then that's where you can end up with a catastrophic failure, um, bent push rods, cracked cylinders and so on and so forth. This machine here has Let's see, 1,234 hours on it. Um, this was a commercially used machine. Um, it has since been retired and now is a residential use machine. Um, I have a couple acres of grass that are cut well, during the summer, usually about twice weekly. Um, the machine does great for that, but definitely does not see the kind of use that it would commercially. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this rear cover off and then we'll start talking and showing what we gotta to do to get this motor ready to swap. Okay, first step, obviously disconnect your battery. Then on the sides of this rear shield, you'll see there are two 10 millimeter bolts, one in there, a little tight to get to, one down in there. Then you got the clips in the rear so we can get a view of those right down there. There's one on each side. Pop those two, pull your, your hold down rod in, and then you'll be able to slide that right out. Okay, with the cover off, next step I'm going to do is set up and get the oil draining. While the oil is draining, I'm going to take off the deck belt, the drive belt, start disconnecting the throttle and choke cable our electrical wires, oil pressure sensor wire, PTO wire. We will be disconnecting our starter wires as well. And then the next thing we will then do is take the uh, PTO clutch off so we can remove the exhaust. Get that out. So we're going to go ahead and let me get that oil draining. Okay, have the oil draining. Now I'm going to take off the uh, drive belt, which just use a half inch drive socket, a ratchet, excuse me, fit it into the hole on the pulley. 
and then you're just gonna pull down to release the tension and slip the belt off. Okay, now with that belt off, I'm gonna come back here to the deck belt, and I just use a pry bar right in there, take the tension up on the pulley, and then you can release the belt. All right, with that belt off, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the electrical connections here and my choke and throttle cable. All right, forgot about this. We need to remove the uh, air cleaner assembly so we can get this harness assembly out. All right, now we'll go ahead and plug that. Okay, now we can put the air cleaner assembly back on there. Keep that carb clean. Okay, with all that disconnected, we have our fuel line disconnected. <clears throat> Going to go ahead and get the the PTO um, clutch off, and then we'll get the exhaust out of the way. And then we'll go ahead and uh, I think the next step then will be to go ahead and disconnect the engine mount bolts so we can swing it out and pull our starter and our voltage regulator off. <clears throat> Okay, so with the PTO clutch off the motor, we're going to re remove <clears throat> this bracket for the PTO clutch, the two bolts for the exhaust, and then the four bolts that hold the exhaust onto the heads. This one is a 16 millimeter, these two are 15 millimeter, these are our 13 millimeter. All right, exhaust is off. Next step is we're going to go ahead and loosen up the motor mounts because then I can just rotate the motor and work right off the deck there to take the starter and voltage regulator and rest of that harness off. All right. We have all the wires disconnected, ground wires, starter wires, the four engine mount bolts are out. The four engine mount bolts, they're 13 millimeter. They can be tough to get to with an impact or anything. So I find using a, like a gear wrench and a standard wrench makes probably the easiest way to get that out. Going to go ahead and uh, lift the motor off of there, put it on the dolly. I put the new motor up on the bench. I think it'll be easier to put the starter on there. So I'm going to go ahead and shift that over, pull this old motor out. All right, got the motor off the Z-Track. All right, there were little metal pieces on both sides that held the wiring, the uh, harness in place. Took both of those off, put them on the new motor. These two wires here are actually what are going to be coming from your from your from your um, from your stator. Okay, so those get disconnected from the harness here. You're going to be unscrewing this voltage regulator. There's two screws, and then there's two bolts here for the starter. And then you're going to take these both off, and that's going to get moved over to the uh, new motor. I'm going to go ahead and take them off. All right, so we got everything off there. I apologize, there was actually only one screw on the voltage regulator. It fits into a little locking groove here. And then it's just one screw. Then you got these two white wires here. Um, I believe these go up to the coils. Um, so you just got to unhook that. And then the whole assembly is uh, ready to come off. Okay, so here's our new motor. And again, you can see the two white wires two wires coming from the stator. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna disconnect those white wires, leave the stator motors there, the um, wires there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the voltage regulator. Then we gotta go ahead and remove this starter, and then we'll be able to reverse everything, put everything in. I believe this starter is on two studs. Can't tell if those are studs or bolts. If they are studs, I'm gonna to have to remove those um, so that we can put the bolts in for the John Deere starter. Okay, old voltage regulator, or the, uh, the new voltage regulator that came with the motor is off. The new starter is off. Fortunately, these were bolts. They had a little paint on the head there. Um, kind of almost gave it the impression that it was like a stud with a nut on it, but fortunately, they are bolts. Um, because as you can see, the John Deere starter is a little different in its setup gonna have to remove this little plastic guard here and uh, just gonna 
cut that with some snips and manipulate that out. And then the new starter will bolt right in. All right, so the original starter is now in place, voltage regulator. Okay, we hooked in the wires from the stator, hooked up the wires that go to the coils, or, or yes, uh, to, yes, uh, to the coils. <clears throat> then we run the harness. Over it hooks into these plastic pieces here, and then these are those plastic pieces that I told you I took off the original motor. And then we then have the wire in for our oil pressure sensor. All right, so that's it for the wiring portion. Um, what I need to do next is take my get my um, my drain off my old motor. That'll go, that'll go into here, and take the pulley off the front for the. Uh, the drive for the uh, drive belt. So another thing we're going to have to swap over is this adapter that goes on the front of the crank. This one sticks out of here four and a half inches, whereas the original one from the John Deere motor sticks out about three and a half inches. So not a big deal. Pop this pulley off, take these four bolts off, and then it's just four bolts and we should be able to go ahead and swap that right over. Well, see, four 10 millimeter bolts, take the shield off. Four 12 millimeter bolts, take this off the front of the crank. Or I should say, I think that's the, that's the fly, well, it's the fan and then there's the flywheel. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull the pulley off the original motor and then we'll be able to do the same thing, bolt that piece in. And then what's nice is there'll be a nice mark from the set screw on that pulley. So it'll be very easy to line it up and Make sure we have it in the correct position. All right, so there's the piece off of the original motor. You can see the, the difference in the length. Um, there is not enough clearance on the John Deere machine to run this one even if you wanted to. But as you can see, again, there's a mark where, this, where the uh, locking screw, the set screw, goes for the pulley. <coughs> pulley came off relatively easily. I mean, you could use a puller. Um, <coughs> I just uh, was able to just tap it with a rubber mallet and able to get it off that way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bolt this on, get the, the uh, screen back in place, and then we'll be able to go ahead and put the pulley in place. All right. The adapter is on. Pulley is back in place. You can just see in there where the set screw had uh, hit the keyway. So I'm just going to put the set screw in, and then that's all done. All right, the last thing we need to swap over before we reinstall the motor is the oil drain valve. Now, um, I'm pretty sure this is a standard feature on the John Deere motor, but it does not come on the Kawasaki motor. Definitely worth swapping over um, because it makes changing your oil much easier. Um, the 757, I believe the 737 as well, has a hole there for the uh, valve to go down in there. You just put a piece of hose on it and drain it right down. So you definitely want to swap that over. So we're going to go ahead and remove that, put that in the new motor. All right, so drain valve is installed on the new motor. And I have the motor set in place. Uh, I just dropped the bolts through the holes, haven't put the nuts on them, locked them down yet. As you can see, the pulley lines up right where it should for the, uh, for the drive belt. Everything sits right in there. And now at this point, reassembly um, with all the uh, conversions and things that had to be switched over is identical to um, You know disassembly, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything up only difference here is Well, this one comes with a, a different little different fuel filter So I'll probably go ahead and swap that um, Not sure how we'll run that yet not sure if I'm gonna go with my original setup because I know that's a pretty much pretty new filter May just disconnect it up there and go ahead and put it up there. But we'll see how that goes. I'll go as soon as I have everything back together. I'll uh, come back on and we'll go ahead and uh, start it up for the first time. See how it does. All right. Motor's all installed. Everything is hooked up. Got oil in the motor. Um, the one thing I did not swap over... Um, which you do have to swap over as well when you're convert when you're doing the Kawasaki motor into the John Deere is the oil pressure sending switch that has to get swapped over as well. 
Um, bottom line, one company uses one that's open all the time. The other one uses one that's closed all the time. Um, I did not have the socket to get in there. Um, there's a special socket that you can get in to, to, to remove the sensor, um, which I don't have. I'm picking it up from Napa later on, and I'll swap it over. Um, the only other way would actually be to take the oil cooler off, and um, then you can actually put a 26 millimeter box wrench on it and break it free. Uh, but I did not want to take the oil cooler off. So I'm gonna start this, um, should start right up and run, um, but I'm expecting my oil pressure light to come on um, because I'm running the wrong oil pressure switch. Um, but I'll get that swapped out later. So here we go, let's give it a shot. Pull the choke up, give it a little throttle. Perfect. Runs good. All right, well that concludes this video. Um, I'll go ahead and get that oil pressure switch swapped over, but that is something that you do need to do if you are doing this uh, engine swap and using a Kawasaki motor. If you, if you choose to go and buy the motor from John Deere and get the John Deere motor, it's more expensive. It's about 800 bucks, eight to $900 more than the Kawasaki motor, but it will come complete with the harness, the correct starter, the correct voltage regulator, the correct oil pressure sensor, you won't have to swap any of that over. So real, you know, you'll also have the correct stub shaft and pulley. Um, that that's really going to be, uh, you know, a personal choice. Um, to me, it wasn't difficult to swap all that stuff over. Um, and uh, I'm going to take this outside now. I'm going to let it run for about an hour at varying RPMs. Uh, break the motor in a little bit. Then I'm going to dump the oil, put a fresh filter and oil on it, and that's when I'll. Go ahead and change that oil pressure sending unit and get that all done all at the same time. But that concludes this video. I hope this helps anybody out there doing the same thing. If you like what we're doing here, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you very much and have a great day.